360 degree filming cameras are everywhere. They seem like the new rage, but are they for you? And how do you know? Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Today we have a very interesting topic to cover and that is these. Now these are 360 cameras. It has a lens on the front and it has a lens on the back. That's how a 360 camera works. It actually films from this lens in the front 180 degrees and it films from this lens in the back 180 degrees and it stitches the video together in a way that creates an immersive 360 degree image all the way up, all the way down and all the way around the sides from wherever this camera is filming. Now the tagline for one of the more popular 360 cameras is shoot now, frame later. And we're gonna need to keep that in mind as we talk about the pros and cons of the 360 cameras. Before we go too far into that, there's two major players in the 360 camera space with a three cameras that I would even consider looking at. One of them, obviously, is the GoPro Hero Max. Now this is the latest GoPro camera that supports 360 video and pictures. There should be a new camera soon. It will have similar features to the Max, just with probably better lighting and whatever, but I do not expect a giant jump in pixel ratings for the newer camera, and I'll explain that as we get further into this video. There are two other cameras, but they're made by one brand, and that would be the Insta360. Now they have two models that I would actually consider. One is called the One X2. Now the One X2 is the successor to the One X. I would not consider the One X, and there's reasons for that, and I'm not gonna go into those reasons because we're just talking about should you get a 360 camera in the first place, not which one to get. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. The other camera is the Insta360 1R 360 edition. Now this camera is unique in the fact that it is modular, meaning you can pull the body of the camera off and attach different lenses. The nice thing about that one is you can attach the 360 lens mod, they have a one inch sensor mod that you can put on, and they have a regular action camera lens mod that you can put in. It's nice if you can't make up your mind which camera you want, and I spent a lot of time looking at that. If you are not new to this channel, you've already seen my unboxing video of the Insta360 ONE X2, so you know that I at least had that camera quite recently but now you only see the GoPro Hero Max on my desk. I'll explain that as well in a minute. Now that we know what the different camera options are on the market, or at least the ones that I would consider, how do you know if a 360 camera is right for you? Part of it comes in that tagline that we talked about, shoot now, frame later. The important thing to know is it is impossible to frame a 360 camera shot. And that's simply because the camera is shooting all 360 degrees all the time. People who are used to the old style of filming, where you line up your shot, you frame it all out, you hit record, and then you film. And wherever that camera is pointing is what you're capturing. And that is fine if you're in a controlled environment or where the subject is known to you. I'll give you an example. It's Christmas. Your kids are opening presents. You want to film the kid that's opening the present. You point the camera at the kid that's opening the present and you film them while they open the present. Easy. What happens if you are out at a skating rink and your kids are everywhere? If you're like me, you got lots of kids. Which kid do you choose to film? How do you know which one's gonna do something interesting and which one's not doing anything at all? Well, you don't know. And so you end up trying to just place your bet. You're like, oh, this is the kid to watch. He always does something interesting. And then you've got a new camera star and you've got your poor other child in the background just not knowing what to do because dad never films me anyway. Enter the 360 camera. I took this to the skating rink recently. And uh, actually I was just being a goofball trying to film a super epic 
360 video so that I could just get my feet wet with this thing and figure out exactly how to use it. Plus I wanted to go through the editing process and what that feels like. I had no idea what all I was gonna capture, but I knew that after the fact I could sit down and then choose which subject I wanted to look at at which part of the video. And I created the video that you're watching right now, which is me just, again, skating around, screwing around on the ice, just filming everything and then trying to frame it after the fact. Now I ended up with about three minutes of video footage. As you can see here, it's been trimmed down and kind of stylized a little bit to try to, you know, make it look really impressive. And that gets me to the deciding factor of which camera should you choose? A traditional camera, like a regular GoPro. This is being filmed right now on a GoPro Hero 8. With the tagline of shoot now, frame later, you have to understand that framing later is a requirement. If you end up with just a 360 video, you can't really share that yet on social media because there's no tools on there for scrolling through in a 3D space. They're great if someone's thrown on some virtual goggles and they wanted to you know, experience this, but we're not there quite yet either. That means for every, say, five minutes of video, you will need to spend at least an additional five minutes after the fact in front of a computer or on your phone using an app. There are some apps that you can, you know, do some stuff with these with as well and figure out what the subject of the video is because you didn't know when you filmed it and you weren't able to point it at that subject. It allows you to capture everything and then pick the subject later, which can be great. I'm going to be using this camera for our budget car road trips specifically because a lot of times I film those trips just with a GoPro run and gun style, so I'm holding it like this, and I have to figure out, do I want to film me right now or do I want to turn the camera and try to film something else? With this, I don't have to decide then. I can just hold it out, film, and it'll get me but in post-production, I can also turn and look over there, over there, behind me, all 360 degrees around me. It makes the whole world available to me. The post-production process will be vastly improved, but also more time-consuming. And that's because the footage, everything can be a subject. Not just what, what you see when you're filming it, but you can turn the camera, you can point it anywhere you want. It's a hard concept to grasp. So watch that video of me skating around again to really get an idea. I did not move this camera. I was just holding this camera in front of me the entire time. And then after the fact, I just moved around and said, now look at that, now look at that, now look at that. It's really quite fun. Now the other thing that these do have, all of them currently shoot at 5.7K. Now that's misleading because like my GoPro Hero 8 that I'm filming on right now, it films in 4K. And you're like, okay, well this films higher. The 5.7K is counting all of the pixels across all 360 degrees of space. Since we are never actually on our flat monitors, ever actually looking at the entire video all at once, you don't get 5.7K of video footage. The part that you're seeing is actually a 1080p image quality. You can boost it up to 4K, a simulated 4K after the fact and post and blah, 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 but it is not 5.7K. Don't kid yourself. These cameras also have in the GoPro, they have action cam mode, which turns off the 360 cameras and films from just one of these, the same as what a GoPro would, but at 1080p. Your frame rate options are, are very reduced and usually they're very low frame rate, which is okay for me. I usually shoot only at 24 frames per second anyway, simply because it gives me more time to allow more light in so that I can get the subjects lit better. These also work best outdoors. Indoors, all of them suck, quite honestly. I did my unboxing video of uh, exercise bike with the Insta360, and I, that was my first time using that camera, and I did not realize how poor that was. By the time I cropped in and, and set it all up, there was so much digital noise because I did not have enough light and it, it was a bad experience. I feel bad for anybody who tried to watch that video because I, as I was editing it, I was like, holy crap, this footage is horrible. In fact, if you haven't seen my review, that's why I returned the camera. Spoiler alert, 
I returned that camera. Why did I return that camera? Well, largely because the screen is a round circle and it's nice, it's a touch screen, you can scroll around and pick your subject and whatever. This screen here is much more familiar to me. If you're used to using a GoPro, this is a very familiar screen. The nice thing about having a lens on both sides is the GoPro Hero 9 and 10 and soon the 11, they have front facing screens. Well, this camera, if I go like this, I can push this button and now this is a front facing screen because I'm using this lens and I can see everything on this screen right here. And if I just tap that and it goes away, I can see everything, absolutely everything. If I want, I can then go like this and switch it to this lens on the back here. And now I can see everything that I need to film that way. I get the benefit of a front and rear screen with only having one screen. Now that it sucks that the lens sticks out so far. So I got these lens cap protectors, which are really great. If you're familiar with the GoPro and you're used to using a GoPro, this is actually the camera that I recommend. I tried the Insta360, I did not like it. The form factor is skinnier and taller, which is nice. But if you're used to a GoPro, this is the one. The Insta360 is not a bad camera. Lots of people use it, they use it successfully. It works great for them. And it's about the same price as the Hero Max anyway. Feature for feature, they're about the same. You can look at other guys' videos where they compare, here's the low light and here's the high light and here's me jogging down a hill and here's me riding a bike and whatever. But the reality is if you took one of those videos out and just had one video, you'd look at it and you'd be like, wow, that looks really good. And if you took that video out and put that video in, you'd be like, oh wow, that one looks really good. When you're comparing the two, you can scrutinize it a little bit more and be like, oh, this one's a little better there and this one's a little better there. Just know a 360 camera is about the 360. It's not about all these little features so much. It works very, very well for a specific purpose. There are so many downsides that my recommendation is you probably don't want a 360 oh. camera. As cool as this is, most of you are not used to editing your footage after. You're used to filming your footage, upload it to Instagram, and then move on with your life. You don't want to sit in front of a computer. I am a YouTuber. I make videos for fun. I get a little bit of money on the side for it. And I'm used to going to my computer, chopping up the video, editing it all out, and trying to do all that. However, even for me, going like sledding with my kids, which I did with this, I'm not gonna go after and edit that video. That means I'm going to have a huge library of unedited videos where the subject is not known. It's not so bad actually because I did enjoy reviewing my footage and being able to say, oh, I can watch someone going down the hill. Oh, I can turn and see people at the top of the hill, what they were still doing while someone else was going down the hill. It gives you so much more perspective of the entire experience that it is very cool. However, for sharing and everything, you will have to spend that time. And for that reason, having a traditional camera where you just point it in one way, you film it and what you got is what you got, it's still the way most of you are gonna want to do your videos. At the end of the day, as cool as a 360 camera is, it's not that cool and you probably wanna wait a little bit longer. In the next year or two, there'll probably be a lot better tools for processing 360 footage. The social media will better support 360 footage. So if you're not worried about what they're gonna see all around, you can just upload it and people can scan through that footage and watch it. The tools just aren't quite there yet because we're still trying to understand what to do with this 360 footage. And also the fact that it's not a 5.7K. So if you're not totally sure, the deciding factor, a 360 video when you don't know what's going to happen while you're filming and you want the most flexibility but in the actual filming mode a regular camera is just fine hey thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video we hope you enjoy the content in this video and we'd love to have you come back consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already and for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. 
you can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.